uh, the grip, the <laughs> downward spiral of black Republicans from the party of Lincoln. You better get that in to the cult of Trump. Um, I have dialed back from going hard in the paint to tell people to vote this time. Um, I made a conscious decision. I, I know you're doing it. I know Reese's doing it. Larry's doing it. Y'all are doing it in all kinds of ways. I feel like at this point, first of all, this audience is super smart. They know what's at stake. I don't have to beat. I don't have to beat it into them. Um, and and at some point, it becomes like, like I said, you know, when my mother would yell up to tell me to clean my room, and I'm already cleaning my room, I would get annoyed. So I'm like, okay, this will be a couple of three hours that will we're gonna hit it. Of course. What is your biggest concern going into 2024, going into November, Clay Kane? What is your biggest concern for us? You know, I read a quote uh, on my show from Noam Chomsky, and he was talking about 1930s Germany. And I'm paraphrasing here. He said the mistake the Communist Party made at the time, they said the Nazi Party and the Social Democrats were exactly the same. We see how that turned out. My biggest concern for 2024 for people is for people to not see the differences, for people to not have critical skills. You know, if we don't celebrate our wins, we don't know when we're winning. The other side, they will turn a loss into a win. We will turn a win into a loss. I want us to utilize and capitalize on our power. Um, I cover this in the book, and you know the stat, Karen, it's one of my favorite stats. In, the, in, in 1868, 80% of black men were registered to vote in 1868. Sadly, black women couldn't vote. We don't have that number now. We had less power then and used our power more. We have more power now and use our power less. So I want us to just fully, my fear is not having discretion and not fully utilizing our power. And lastly, my fear is the moment where it's too late, where we can't turn back now. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. But that said, I still have hope. I have hope in you. I have hope in me. I have hope in Laurie. I have hope in, in Michael Harriet people out there doing the work, I still have hope. I still have hope. And that keeps me pushing. I, I still got a passport, but I still have hope. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I was, so I was the, uh, the fear just, with the hope. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm mostly always have been a glass half full type of person. Um, I'm not at all concerned about November in the way that, you know, we would be typical. The way I was in 2016, I was concerned because I knew that the Supreme Court was up for yeah. grabs and that meant a domino effect of things. So then it happened, right? We had it. It happened. He did exactly what I thought he would do. I'm now thinking differently, and I'm, <laughs> I, I shouldn't say this publicly. I almost feel like an, an event needs to happen for people to not just, you know, go to the streets the way we did during the summer of George Floyd. We were in a pandemic, George Floyd, we watched him die. People all over the globe were in the streets because the outrage was palpable and it, we saw a man die. We saw a man die. I feel like we like to F around because we don't think these things can happen because we're so far removed from the Pettus, the, the bridge from the 16th Street Baptist Church. We're so far removed from the ass kiss kicking, from the burning of the buses and the freedom rides. And the we're so far removed from it that I don't think we feel the lash because we're so far removed from it that it's not it's not right in our faces, even though they're they're moments of them. You know, Elijah McClain and Sandra Bland and, you know, yeah. we, we, we will get up with both them. John will get up for moments, but to have it across the board, because truthfully, most of us are not being brutalized by police every day. But when it comes to not being able to move freely about this country and have rights, as women are seeing right now with abortions, I mean, a white woman had to go across the state lines and violate the law to get an abortion that ne she needed for her life to be saved. And that became a story. And a black woman who who had a miscarriage, something horrific happened to her, is now in court battling for her freedom. It's 
it's about to go down in a way that I don't think many of us are prepared for, but I think we need some of us to, to see the reality, the harsh reality that is here. You know, Karen, I feel a little bit different about that because I feel like if we go back to the harsh reality, I could be wrong. I don't know if we're ever going to come back from that. My vision is that their ultimate goal is to overturn the 1964 Civil Rights Act. You already have right-wing activists talking about that. I feel like if that happens, that we are at the point of no return. And I understand what you're saying. People have to get, we got to wake up. You know, we, we, we got to be clear. We got to be aware. But I feel like if we go back to, if we go to Project 2025, you've covered it, I've covered it. I don't know if there's any coming back from that. I, I, it's that. All that, right, so um, walk us through it. Walk us through it. Worst case scenario, 866-801-8255. Clay Kane is here. The Griff comes out tomorrow. He's going to be in, uh, in Philly on Wednesday. Back, you Philly gonna, on Wednesday. You going Uncle Bobby. You going home? Uncle Bobby. I'm going, home, going home. Mark Lamont. Yeah, you, you got to get tickets on Eventbrite. Philly on Wednesday. I'll be in New York City tomorrow at the Strand, but that's sold oh, out. Reese Colbert yeah. is hosting that. No more oh, tickets. Wow. Wow. Uh, February 1st, I'll be at Rutgers. you got to register for that. Rutgers, Newark. Then I'll be in D.C. the 4th and the 5th, Atlanta the 10th. I'm, I'm, I see. I see. I'm like Tina Turner on these streets. I see. I see. Rolling, rolling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry. You said walk us yeah, through no, that? Walk us through. So, so Project 2025 um, yeah. has already actually, you know, the, the Heritage Foundation. This plan started when Obama was elected. So it, it the outrage of having a black man running a country and then the presidency became diminished. So then there became this kind of states rights, which gave us the civil war states rights kind of move. And they did it with the knowledge of reconstruction and how that was overturned. Right. So and then the Nuremberg laws, they, they have been doing this since I, I said we've been in a cold civil war since the civil war that was just a yeah. battle one and then lincoln yeah. got assassinated then they turned back we've never been out of it yeah that's the that's what i'm saying like we got this false sense of rights and voting and this but the cold civil war has been going on so walk us through project 2025 january somebody well, the, sworn in exactly so the key to project 2025 which is unlike uh what we saw with the fall of reconstruction uh, unlike what we saw even during the Civil War, is that they want to give complete control to the President of the United States, that there are no longer checks and balances, that the House and the Senate do not have power, that it is ultimate, absolute power to the executive branch. Now, I'm not a fan of the founders or the framers, or whatever you want to call them, demons, but that was one thing they did not want. They did not want the executive branch to have absolute power. So that is a really terrifying angle to me because that is the epitome of a dictatorship. That's what Hitler did. That's what Mussolini did. That's what Kim Jong-un, his, his father did. That's what, that's what uh, Vladimir Putin did. That's what Idi Amin did, where you have the, the executive branch has ultimate power. So that's what really concerns me. Then there are some other elements that, again, we haven't seen before. So they want to have a militarized police force in local areas, a militarized police force. So we see elements of that today, but we're talking about the military having control over West Philadelphia. Mm. That's terrifying. Who's going to be impacted by that? The, and you, you talk about qualified immunity. If you've got the military patrol in West Philadelphia, now this will only be in certain areas. It'll be in Chicago. It'll be in Philly. It won't be in Beverly Hills. It won't be in the poor white areas. It won't be in the most violent state in the country. You know what state that is, um, Karen Hunter? Alaska. The most violent state in the country is <laughs> Alaska. Alaska. Yes. I do a whole segment called White on White Crime. So it's that, a militarized police force in local areas. Uh, there is also a ban on pornography. So on your surface, you might be thinking, okay, who cares about pornography? But what they're doing is they're connecting pornography to LGBT people. That this is, they are considered pornographic. And if a trans person is walking down the street, they can be arrested. You could fire a person for being gay. This Project 2025 is, is terrifying to me. I can go down a long list. But the ultimate is executive power. No more checks and balances. 
And this democracy, quote unquote, whatever you want to call it, this situation ship is shaky as hell. But the reason why we did not have a complete coup on January 6th is because of our checks and balances. Now, here's the the effed up part to me, is that if we really had people who valued our checks and balances, they would have impeached this man and convicted him. They had two times to do it. So my fear is that they want him back in power. And whether it's Trump or somebody else, the power players in the GOP, they're tired of that whole constitution, the framers. No, they want complete power for money. They're tired of all these black and brown folks in Congress. They're tired of all these protesting, all this this protesting and so on. So that's what it looks like for me, immediately dismantling the checks and balances of our country. Again, not a fan of, of, of the framers, but that's a, the idea of President Trump having complete power, that means you and I are off the radio. They're putting in laws where you could sue somebody for defamation if you call them racist. And then, like I said, the 1964 Civil Rights Act, to make it plain, that bans discrimination in public accommodations. That's a return to well, Jim Crow. They're, they're revert. So this was the, the key for me, the affirmative action overturn. Oh, yeah. Followed by, by the a lawsuit. black Republican. <laughs> affirmative action. Folks right. forget that. <laughs> followed by lawsuits against like the Fearless Fund. Ex- that, that was a signal to me women. that this is how they're coming. Right. So oh, to, yeah. when you just said what you just said, you and I every day, everyone on these airwaves go hard. We go hard in the paint. Yes. Against racism. Yes. Calling somebody a racist will be a crime. Sirius XM could get sued. You and I would personally be sued. Yes. Sirius XM is going to cut their losses. You already know that. You oh, already yeah. know. We, we ain't yeah. Howard Stern. No. And then what's crazy, we can't go to Twitter. Nope. We can't go to YouTube because those things will be codified into law. There will be no place where we'd be able to talk. Right. Talk this talk. Cat this cat. Right. That's a scary place. And that that is exactly how it happens. That is how it happens. 